What's up, All-Stars? Welcome to the School of Ireland. So a question I often get from students is, besides helping and counseling people, which is super important, do psychologists do anything else? And the answer to that question is yes, absolutely yes. There are so many things that psychologists do. And what's cool about this video is we're gonna examine just how broad the field of psychology is by examining some of its domains. Now, fair warning, we're not gonna go over all the fields that psychologists can go into. We're just gonna touch on the ones that the College Board wants you to know for the AP test. So let's get started. The first domain that we're gonna look at today is the clinical domain. The clinical domain is pretty straightforward in that clinical psychologists help individuals with psychological disorders such as anxiety, depression, and so much more. These clinical psychologists are literally lifesavers and they just have a huge heart for helping others. Before we go any further, now is the perfect time to answer another question that students always ask me, and that is, what is the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? Well, on the one hand, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor, which means they can use drugs to treat patients if necessary. Psychiatrists also use psychotherapy, which you can learn more about in the clinical psychology unit. Now, on the other hand, a psychologist does not have a medical degree, which means they can use psychotherapy to treat their patients, but they cannot prescribe drugs. And that's it. That's the primary difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. The next domain that we're gonna look at is the counseling domain. As you can probably guess, this domain is somewhat similar to the clinical domain in that counselors look to help individuals who are going through a difficult time in their lives. However, counselors won't typically spend as much time helping individuals with mental illness as a clinical psychologist would. For example, a counselor will often provide coping strategies for individuals going through a tough time in life. Someone who might seek out counseling is a child who just lost a parent or an individual who's going through a divorce. The third domain that we're gonna look at is the biological domain, which studies how the structures of the brain and nervous system influence behavior. One of the many things that a biological psychologist might be interested in studying is how a deficit of a neurochemical called serotonin, which helps regulate a person's mood, is linked to depression. Another domain of psychology is the cognitive domain, which focuses on the question, how do humans process, perceive, store and recall information. And to answer this question, cognitive psychologists spend a lot of time studying topics like language, decision-making, learning, and memory. Our fifth domain is the developmental domain, which studies how people change and grow over their lifetime. This domain delves into topics such as changes in cognition, linguistics, moral development, motor development, and much more. Another domain is the educational domain, which investigates how people learn and process information. The goal of this domain is to help teachers implement the most effective practices for teaching in their classroom. The next domain is the experimental domain, which deals with researching a broad spectrum of human behaviors, mental processes, disorders, and so forth in an attempt to expand the psychological scientific knowledge base. Experimental psychologists study a plethora of topics that range from a new drug's effects on rats to examining how willing and individual is to help a supposedly injured person lying on the ground. Our eighth domain is the industrial organizational domain, which studies how to maximize employee performance in the workplace. For example, an industrial organizational psychologist might look into the effects of cell phone use, lighting in an office, and different management styles on worker performance. The next domain is the personality domain, and it's pretty straightforward in that it examines how personalities affect the ways in which people navigate the world. A personality psychologist might look at the impacts of personality traits like introversion or extroversion and assess how these traits might help or hinder an individual from reaching their goals. The 10th domain that we're gonna look at today is the psychometric domain, which focuses on the creation and implementation of tests that can be used to measure mental attributes, behavior, performance, and so on. A psychometric psychologist might be interested in creating something like an IQ test or a personality test as a means to get a better understanding of human behavior and mental processes. The next domain is the social domain, which looks at how things like culture, religion, family, peer groups, income, and the environment shapes an individual's beliefs, goals, and behaviors. This domain will examine and delve into questions like, how might a person's behaviors, actions, and thoughts differ due to the religion they practice, their household income, and the neighborhood they grow up in? The last domain that we're gonna talk about today is the positive psychology domain, which was developed by Martin Seligman in an attempt to help people live their most meaningful and fulfilling lives. Seligman wanted to change the way in which people viewed psychology. He wanted psychology to be viewed in a light that focused less on mental illness and more on helping people thrive. As Christopher Peterson points out in A Primer in Positive Psychology, positive psychology is a call for psychological science to be as concerned with strength, 
as with weakness. It's as interested in building the best things in life as in repairing the worst, and is concerned with making the lives of normal people fulfilling. In other words, positive psychology doesn't look to undermine the other branches that focus on mental illness. It just looks to broaden the amount of people that psychology helps in general so that everybody can live their best life. So that's it. Those are the major domains. But before I wrap up this video, let's talk about the difference between something called applied research and basic research. Applied research is research that is performed in an attempt to solve scientific problems. For example, the industrial organizational domain uses applied research because it looks at solving the problem of poor worker performance. On the other hand, basic research aims to increase the scientific knowledge base. For example, the social domain implements basic research because it's all about expanding our understanding of human behavior within and between groups. In other words, the social domain isn't focused on solving problems like the industrial organizational domain is, but rather it's focused on expanding our understanding of why humans do what they do. Now in a second, I'm gonna present you with a little challenge in regards to the difference between applied and basic research. But first, make sure you smash that like button and hit subscribe if you're someone who wants to dominate your site class. All right, all stars, here's your challenge. Here's a list of all the domains that we've talked about in this video. So what I want you to do is go down the list and identify which domains use applied research and which domains use basic research. You already know that the industrial organizational domain uses applied research and the social domain uses basic research. So now it's your job to properly categorize the rest. So go ahead and pause this video and when you're done, go ahead and scroll down to the comments to find the answers. And let's make this a challenge. Who can get the most right? And with that said, I wish you good luck and I'll see you next time.